Does that sound like the, the mic thing? Yes. Do we have any mics in here? You have to put your phone down. Yeah, put your phone down. Before, uh, Switch out where I can get it when it comes time. Yeah. Can, can we just keep our heads up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Would you please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Pro Tem Waterman, would you grace us with the invocation, please? If you would, uh, please bow your heads with me. Our gracious and almighty God, we take this time to humble and remind ourselves that we do put our trust in you. Tonight, I graciously ask that your presence would be here with wisdom, with your truth, with your grace, and with your justice. We thank you that you're able to bring us hope even in the toughest of times, strengthening, strengthening us for your purposes. We thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work and for the honor of carrying out the responsibilities for which we have been elected for. I thank you for our elected officials, our city staff, businesses, churches, the families and individuals that make our city, the city of Canton, the great place that it is. And we thank you for this. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Call to order our May 7th, 20, 2024 council meeting to order. We'll begin with a consideration to approve tonight's agenda. Are there any additions or revisions? Mr. Mayor, I would request to amend the agenda for new business item F, discussion and possible action on an agreement for engineering services with Schnabel Engineering LLC. Second. Okay. Is that new business item F? Any other additions or changes or motions? Motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. The motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. All members voted for the motion. We'll begin tonight. We do have uh, a guest speaker with us tonight, and uh, that is the presentation for the South Canton Schem Park Schematic Design, and we have Mr. Adam Williamson with TSW Planning. Welcome, Mr. Williamson. Good evening. So we're excited um, to present the South Canton schematic plans to you guys. You saw it um, last year, the concepts. So we've moved it forward after some meetings with, with the public. Um, and we made some revisions based off what we heard the public meetings and, and working with the city. Um, these are some images of more inspiration images. You can see kind of a natural elements that we wanted to pull um, to the design. Um, and these are some of the ideas that we, when we were working through it, we were looking at um, programming, and we'll d dive into that on the first slide. The second slide, we're looking at kind of stormwater and sustainability with bioswells and how, how to use the stormwater to our advantage, and then circulation, and then also just view sheds as you come into the park, how you can see different views from, from the parking. Now, this is a simple plan that kind of describes it fairly well because this is, kind of gets busy, but um, you can see the different components. We have a dog park, 
A is a um, open lawn area, and then we have a small dog park and a log, large dog park, and the green area to the north is more of a play area. And then to the left, you'll see is the parking, and we and one of the changes we made that we heard was more one-way street or one-way parking drive from Ivy up. Um, we made that change. So this is a very uh, flexible area, and in, a, in the next slide, you'll see um, kind of more detail of this. It's kind of hard to read, but you can see one of the things that we wanted to do is keep all the trees, and it, this plan reads that way, where there's a lot of trees saved, and to make this, um, un and keep this wooded area um, nice and wooded. <clears throat> so this is a playground enlargement. There's a large gully that runs through the site, um, and you can also see a water tower at, on the top there, is one of your projects that we've kind of been coordinating with the engineering on that. Um, so we took advantage of the gully and making it a, a play area for kids, and we have some perspectives to show that. And you can see some of the elements that we're proposing around the edge, those images, slides, and the tower, and just some playable type art. This is an enlargement of the dog park area. Um, you can see DNC, that's the, um, the small dog park, and we see some agility type uh, um, items in there, maybe a tunnel, and then it would be artificial turf mainly. And the same for the large dog park, which you see is labeled C. Um, it's a little bit larger for, for the larger dogs and some of the same agility type skills training for dogs. This is a perspective of, of the small dog park kind of looking over mm -hmm. into, you see the stage pavilion in the background. And this is another view of that, looking in the background A, you see a bathroom facility. I mentioned the gully, the natural gully that exists, and you can see that in this perspective. Um, really, the, the trick to that is trying to get down to the, the bottom of the gully with a um, ADA, and you can see some of the paths kind of winding down there. In reality, we probably have more trees, but with the trees on there, you couldn't see, couldn't see as well. But you can see the, the, um, the surface at the bottom is kind of designed to be a rubber surface that would be like, <coughs> like a creek area. Um, we have the slides that, take, that we kind of work with the grades to create that where the kids will be at the top and they can slide down working with the natural grades and some of the other playground. And one of the, my favorite parts is D there on the, on the side there. You can see the, a bridge um, that goes across Again, connecting one side where we can create a walking trail through through that area, and also some great views over over into that park area. And this is that that bridge I was speaking of. You can see how it works with with the playground and working with the trees, and really trying to take advantage of, of the the beautiful nature that we have on on the park now. This is a close-up of the bathroom facility that's located close to the playground, and you can see a pavilion behind that for shade for parents. If their, their kids are playing in the playground, they can be close to the bathroom facility and also close to a, a shade structure looking over, over the park. And then we did some detailed schematics of the architecturally of, of the building, how that works, laid out the floor, plan, floor plans and um, elevations of that. And we also, this is um, also it's similar in style as the other pavilion, but it's elevated so you could have a, a band there if you like, and it can be multifunctional um, in this area and also serve as a shade structure 24-7. And we did some schematics of, of this structure and really try architecturally to tie, tie all this together with um, um, some of the same materials such as um, stone and the metal roofs and the natural wood elements you see in the beams. So that's our quick presentation and kind of give you guys an update on, on where we are today. We also did a cost estimate. I'm sure that's one of the questions and, and that this came in about 6.9 million with if we did it all at once currently. Thank you, sir, for that presentation. It's certainly exciting to see 
these plans come to life. Uh, and I know we've had a lot of citizen input <coughs> into these plans and different components. Um, and uh, I believe this is one of the agenda items on our retreat agenda to discuss a little bit more detail costs and components and priorities. Um, uh, it's also very exciting to see dog park uh, visuals. Uh, I know that's one of the top uh, priorities for our citizens as well and in our roadmaps. So, but are there any general questions for Mr. Williamson at this time? Thank, Thank you. you so much. We project. Oh, I'm sorry, Travis. Yes, sir. Uh, on the slide, let's see, go back here. Under item 4A, uh, in between F and D, uh, I gotta keep going. Yeah, right there on that slide. I know these are just concepts, but I do see someone in, uh, you know, projected to be in a wheelchair down there. But how ADA accessible uh, is this park going to be? Because it doesn't look like it's very flat. Right. Yeah. It's, we're trying to get it to be 100% accessible. Um, you can kind of see that trail on the left is kind of winding down there to to meet those grades. So it's we didn't want to do a ramp. But we, we would take it to 4.9%, 5% if you have to have a ramp. So we would max that out to be a steep sidewalk but ADA compliant to get you down to that, to that, um, that bottom space. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any further questions? This is from my council and the public who may be watching. You mentioned really wonderful plans, but uh, overall projected price tag is $6.0 point million. If we did all of this and it did it at one time, um, we do have a $2 million grant uh, already committed to the park, and I think these plans do include what the mandatory elements of those. Uh, again, you also see the new water tower, um, which is something that would, is part is that part of the total $6.9 million? No, that's a separate addition. item, so but which, it is inter it's integrated with the, with the park. We've been working with that consultant. Okay, which of course that will come out of our water and sewer funds. So uh, just those notes and we'll get into more details at our retreat. Mr. Tolan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Williamson, this is a very impressive proposal and renderings that you have. I was just thinking, and I'm not suggesting that we do this before <laughs> anybody jumps on my case here, but it seems that uh, if we determine that, would you say it was 6.9? Yes, sir. Is a little uh, pricier than what the city wants to invest. Um, have you guys given thought to not having the raised um, walkways and having those uh, kind of at ground level, if you will? And if so, do you think that would remove some substantial cost if that's if that became an issue with uh, with the city? I think that would reduce the cost. I think there's um, we probably just wouldn't go over that way. Um, with, with that connection, we would be at the lower, that ramp system to get down, and we could remove that piece if that is, or we could phase it later if that, whatever is desired. I see. Just from a, just from a ballpark, what do you, percentage wise, what do you think that might potentially? We, we have it, we have it in my cost estimate. I don't have the cost estimate with me. Um, I, I'm hesitant to, to throw out a number. <laughs> yep, I understand. Maybe. But we do have that information. We can get it. That'd be great. Thank you. If I could just mention from comparisons, I think the improvements we did at Harmon were a little over five million, four point three million, and that was with existing infrastructure in place. So that kind of gives you a little bit of comparison with raw land versus rehab. Okay. Anything else? Thanks, sir. Appreciate Thank having. You having you with us tonight. You have in your packet the draft minutes for our council meeting on February 15th. Are there any changes, revisions, or motions? Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion, a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. All members voted for the motion. We have two informational items this evening, uh, uh, and we'll start with a review of the January uh, financials. Ms. Forrester? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. You have before you the financials for the month of January, which are 
four months of activity in fiscal year 2024. So in a perfect world, you would see as you flip through the financials that we have received and expended approximately 33% of revenues and expenditures. But as you'll see, everything has the timing difference. Some revenues come in early, some come in late, and the expenditures do the same. So I'll be glad to answer any questions if you've prepared any. I did not schedule any purposeful remarks tonight because we have been scrambling to wrap up our financial audit for fiscal year 2023. As you know, we're experiencing some turnover and some key positions. So we're, we're really hustling to get some of that work done. Um, I'm hoping that next meeting, next council meeting on March the 21st, we'll be bringing some budget amendments that are being recommended by the auditors for fiscal year 2023. And the city manager and assistant city manager will probably have more information for you during the retreat regarding those items. I also just wanted to touch that we have started the city's audit with Comcast and Windstream. And those are underway. Um, one thing that's out there, we've noticed that the Comcast franchise agreement will expire this month. So in the future, we'll be bringing um, steps and suggestions to standardize a new agreement with Comcast. And if you don't have any other questions at this time, I'll be glad to take questions from the city manager later, or we can review more items in the next meeting. Okay, okay. Mr. Wasser. Ms. Forrester, uh, can you expand on the, the standardization with, with Comcast? What, uh, I guess, what items of the agreement would you be looking to uh, standardize? That's something that we are working with a consultant on, and we're, that's part of that GMA contract that we approved back in January. Mm -hmm. So they'll be reviewing our items, they'll be reviewing the audit that they're undergoing right now to determine what terms need to be suggested or strongly encouraged. So in a way to make the agreements between Comcast and Windstream somewhat identical. Well, this is just the Comcast right now. Okay, but in terms of standardizing, I would assume Windstream's agreement would somewhat mirror that. Well, right now, the these agreements that we have are pretty old, and they follow generally a statewide um, process that's general for every city and county. And some of our uh, consultants have recommended changes that may benefit us or strengthen our position with these large utility service providers. So tailoring it more to Yes, to our needs and what and the facilities that are in our jurisdiction. Understood. Okay, thank you. And, yeah. and they'll also bring some best practices from some newer franchise agreements that have come up and all that give either more leverage to us or more leverage to the franchisee. That'll all be in their recommendation. Yes. We'll take the ones with more leverage for us. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Forster. Any other questions for Ms. Forster tonight? Of course, she's always available. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so we have an update on the proposed zoning map. Uh, Mr. Green. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, we are still working on updating the zoning map. There are numerous changes that have been uh, proposed to it, such as elimination of some of the residential zoning districts. Uh, we're kind of waiting on some direction on that one to rezone a majority of properties to the R10 by eliminating the R4, R20, R15, uh, and a couple of other districts. There was kind of an uproar from residents along East Main Street. Uh, the uh, position of the council uh, may have changed some there. Also, we've been asked to identify uh, and note 
be following properties that are owned and used for uh, government purposes to be moved to, to SU, which is special use. These would be properties owned by the city, the county, the state, school district, the housing authority, the building authority, Cherokee County Water and Sewer Authority. Uh, properties that would not go to that would be the development authorities and the DDA. Uh, the deletion of the two zoning districts, PD Business Office and PD Traditional Neighborhood seems to be a no-brainer as there are no, prop no parcels currently zoned with that designation. The NC district would be deleted and those two properties would be zoned to general commercial and the RA6 properties, that designation would go away and those properties would be go to RA8. The properties that are zoned ORT, we are in the process of contacting all of those property owners to let them know um, that their zoning is going to change. Um, there's plus or minus 125 uh, properties that are zoned that and we will be seeking input for them and letting them know what our position is to designate their properties. Thank you, Mr. Green. I know we kind of discussed this and discussed trying to get some clarification on the, at least the, the, the non-residential uh, proposed changes um, and, and, and possibly act on those sooner that, rather than later uh, and continue to look at the residential uh, classifications uh, uh, with much greater scrutiny. <laughs> And uh, I know this is, again, one of the big topics on our agenda for, for the retreat, retreat to talk about that in, in depth. Um, just reminding council that the advances uh, will be sunsetting at the end of this month. Uh, and uh, also discussed with the city manager kind of desire to uh, <clears throat> compile a report of, you know, the final proposed changes at this time and just what the information and data that was um, gathered during the abeyance. Uh, so we just kind of report back to that as sort of, this is what we learned and, and this is how we propose moving forward. So um, any specific questions tonight? I think that was just a general update. We're waiting on some more information, I think, from uh, Mr. Green and his team and we'll be discussing it in greater detail. So thanks, sir. Thank you. Do we have any announcements this evening? Not we'll move into our 10 minute public input uh, and we have one citizen uh, resident signed up to speak. Uh, would you please come forward and speak clearly into the uh, microphone at the podium and uh, state your name and address and that's Mr. Stephen Peck. My name is Stephen Peck. I reside at 170 Killian Street in Ward 2. I have a few concerns that I would like to bring to your attention tonight. Uh, firstly, there are ongoing problems with vehicle-related disturbances, excessive speeds, constant use of horns, house rattling music, disruptive exhausts, parking in the middle of the road, and uh, they've all become a common occurrence a daily occurrence. The excessive speed is incredibly unsafe for everyone who lives on Killian Street, especially since foot traffic has increased over the last few years. I see mothers pushing strollers, teens and children walking on the road, while you have individuals flying up and down it at incredibly unsafe speeds. People will lay on their horns instead of getting out and walking to the door without regards of the time of day it is, usually it's in the afternoon into the evening. The music's so loud that it rattles windows, and the majority of it comes from 200 yards away over on Meridian Street, and that is also a daily occurrence. Despite repeated complaints, it persists and requires constant intervention from police. Exhaust from vehicles that are just as loud as, if not louder than the music, has become a problem. At nighttime, there are a few individuals going up and down with 
backfiring exhausts, and <clears throat> well, if you ever heard that, it is quite, quite loud. Uh, stopping in the road has become a common occurrence as well. People believe the hazards are a do whatever you want, where you want button, instead of a uh, I need help button or look out for me. Secondly, the streets in Ward 2 are lined with trash. It seems like every morning I wake up, there's just new trash on the lawn, be it beer can, plastic bottle, plastic bags, car parts. And uh, well, on the topic of that, you know, it impacts the environment around us. And talking about the environment, burning hazardous materials has become a great problem in my area as well. Plastics and rubber has also increased over the last few years. And when you go outside for fresh air, it's just very toxic and choking. And that can't be good for the animals, let alone the residents of the area. Thirdly, a very increasing problem is public urination. And it doesn't matter where it is, on the side of businesses, the houses, on front lawns, in the middle of the roads. I've seen it just about everywhere in the, uh, in the area. And lastly, there are some individuals in the area that really like to celebrate holidays. I myself do enjoy fireworks, but they've gone from small mortars and firecrackers to just Disney-sized extravaganzas, really. And uh, it seems like they're getting to a rather unsafe level for residential areas. But the more dangerous celebratory action that has shown up in the neighborhood over the last couple of years is uh, firing off rounds. And for those who might not know what a round is, it's a bullet from a gun. You know, I'm a law-abiding gun owner. I support the Second Amendment. But uh, the thought about mag dumping a nine millimeter indiscriminately is unacceptable. I just wanted to come here today and inform the board of what is transpiring in Ward 2. As for solutions, I'm, I don't know what would be, you know, just here to start a conversation. Clearly having the cops show up, it's not having an impact on any of this. And I feel every time I call them to make a complaint, I'm wasting their time, you know, to do something more important. But uh, hopefully, I was able to shed some light on a few issues that plagued my neighborhood. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Peck. We have one item on old business this evening. That's item A, discussion and possible action on resurfacing intergovernmental agreement with Cherokee County. Mr. Peppers. Good evening. As I mentioned at our last meeting, uh, the city of Canton, along with uh, the other municipalities, joined in with Cherokee County for a cooperative bid for resurfacing through our LMIG grant from the state of Georgia. Those bids did come in. The intergovernmental agreement that you have basically allows Cherokee County to do the work uh, with the vendor that was awarded the bid. That vendor was Bartow Paving. Uh, the initial estimate for our paving work was 523000 The bid came in at 516000 uh, So I would ask that council consider approving that bid document uh, tonight, and we will attach the actual, uh, approve the intergovernmental agreement tonight, and we will attach the bid sheet to that agreement uh, that we send back to Cherokee County. Thank you, Mr. Peppers. We discussed this at our last meeting, and we were just waiting on the Final bid numbers, anxiously awaiting and hoping they would fall within budget. And it's nice to hear they fell a little slightly below it, which is always a good thing. So any questions from Mr. Peppers on this? Mr. Waterman? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve the resurfacing intergovernmental agreement with Cherokee County in the amount of... Uh, five hundred and sixteen thousand dollars, eight hundred ninety-six dollars and fifty-nine cents. Second. So motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All members voted for the motion. Thank you, Mr. Peppers. 
Moving into new business, item A, discussion of possible abandonment of alley between 120 and 140 Chrysler Street. Mr. Green. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, our office has been contacted by the owners of 140 Chrysler Street in hopes of abandoning an alleyway that runs along beside their house. There are numerous alleyways such as this that are scattered throughout the city, and I believe that they were once used back in the day for coal delivery. Uh, the adjoining neighbor uh, at 120 has also been notified of the owners of, of 140 of Chrysler Street's a desire. And we're here tonight to see how the council might want to approach the abandonment of this alleyway, or even if you have any desire to. Over the years, we uh, have abandoned custom right ways and some alleyways through a variety of means. And typically, the right of way or the alleyway, half of it goes to one a property owner and the other half goes to the other property owner. So we're here looking to see how you might want to do it. Certainly, there will be the need for a survey to be done. Uh, and, and typically, the property owner requesting the abandonment of a bear of that cost. So between now and uh, the next meeting, hopefully we'll get some direction from you folks or Mr. Peppers or Mr. Dyer as to the way that you would like to do this if you even have a desire to abandon this alleyway. Thank you, Mr. Green. No, we've dealt with specific instances on that alleyway um, over the years. Uh, and typically on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, again, the, the city has no easements in, in this particular area or, or that, uh, and uh, uh, we've had instances in the past, I recall, since I've been serving, that you know where you had the alleyway between two properties and there's not an agreement, so it's not clear that this is an agreement, but my understanding is that this, this abandonment would be necessary for uh, them to settle this estate and, and, and potentially sell property. Uh, again, it's it's something. My understanding that it really <clears throat> has no real value to the city at this point, uh, uh, and uh, again, no ease unless there services in that area. Uh, you know, there's also instances, and in, speak for personal <laughs> experience, that you know the uh, that alleyway and certain parcels. I mean, there there are issues with the the deeds and 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 surveys and and. Uh, I guess have to be, as you mentioned, surveyed on a case-by-case -case basis just to, to uh, identify those particularly property lines uh, in this area. So um, I don't personally have any issue with that. And Mr. Dyer, Mr. Beppers, you guys see any issues with this or anything we should be cognizant of going forward? No, we just have to, have, we have to notify people along that right away, whether that's just those two property owners or there's a, Houses at the other end that connects to another alley or another street. So, what we'll fair who get, has to get notice? Your your decision is just whether it ser serves a public purpose anymore. It, it clearly doesn't. So. Right. And then abandoning it, and then who do we convey it to? Are two different steps. So, we can figure that out and maybe do all that at once. Okay. Any questions? Does the property owner understand that they would probably bear the cost of the survey? I have not conveyed that to Matt yet because I was waiting for direction on from uh, the council. It would seem that we should notify them now and see if they want to proceed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I think something if basically the city is abandoning property that it owns or has right away of, then and certainly, uh, and not. I know in in some. Some cases, when we abandon, we actually ask for compensation for that when there's a use or value to the city that being none in this one, certainly not something we can be generous, but not uh, create any additional costs for other taxpayers that aren't impacted by it. these two property owners would benefit from that. But we could probably accomplish the abandonment without a new survey because there will be old plats, subdivision plats, and we could just abandon by reference. The property owners would still have to get surveys to know exactly where the boundary line will end up. But for, for our purposes, we might be able to do it without right. that just by saying, referring to a 
recorded flat and say we're abandoning that portion. Okay. You could let us know that, and if one of those property owners wanted to sell that property, it had, obviously I'd have a survey done as part of that process, so that makes sense. I got a question. Yes, Mr. Roach. Um, Mr. Dyer, if that alleyway connects to another alleyway, does that leave them? I don't, I don't know if it connects to an alleyway or, or street. I, it, Teasley Street, is, I think it may run to, between Chrysler and Teasley Street. If it's two public streets, the, obviously nobody's using it as a cut through. But if it connects to other alleyways, then... Yeah, it does. There's it's another it. alley that goes yeah, from East Main Street down to... Yeah, this alleyway goes a, a pretty good ways down behind, you know, several houses. So that'll, that that can service the, the, the access. I guess because it, it goes on behind, you know, between East Main Street and Teasley, and then it dead ends. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that anybody's using the alleys right. for anything. Um, and I, I know that uh, Dr. Nations is going to come and ask for abandonment of alleys okay. running between her property and Grishman Pool and, gotcha. and behind there. So I think we're going to probably see people coming and asking finally to, to abandon, mostly because everybody needs that five feet or, or whatever. It'll, it, it helps to get a little more air, uh, area. Right. And we discussed, I discussed with city manager, I mean, could we look at those alleys kind of holistically and, and look, but there are individual <laughs> instances that come up in, in properties and parcels and recordings over time that, that I think it certainly seems to make sense to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. So, any other questions? Just one uh, follow-up, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Mr. Dyer, as it relates to, you, you mentioned that this requires a survey necessarily, but are you saying that there could be a requirement between the two property owners to d decide exactly where that line is? Well, just to know where it is on the ground. Uh, and, and, that, and now that I, when you started asking that question, I realized for us to do a deed, we would probably need the survey if we were going to deed it to them. But I'll have to see how much detail the plat has. Okay. Because if it shows that it's a 10 foot width or 15, we could just say you get half of it and you get half of it. And then a surveyor would go figure out where it is actually on the ground. And I'll mention in this particular interest or case, if you look at an, an aerial survey with the property lines are superimposed on this, it looks like the property owners at 140, that their driveway or access to their property is in that alleyway. Now that just depends on how accurate the property lines were overlaid on an aerial photo. So that may be an issue as well as to who gets half and half. It Obviously, if somebody's got their private driveway on there, it's not serving a public purpose anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and there's no reason for the city to still have right of way. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Green. <clears throat> Moving to item B, which is for discussion only, is dis uh, again discussion of task order five with Keck and Wood Inc. for. Way 140 utility relocation amount of $81,500. Thank you. Um, so this item is for the design of utility relocation for the Highway 140 at Marietta Road Riverstone Parkway um, realignment that we're currently undertaking uh, with Michael Baker International. Um, this project would take us through the entire rest of the phasing with utilities and then they would design <coughs> the water and sewer that has to be relocated. Due to the realignment of Shoal Creek, we have a pretty large number of water and sewer lines that are going to have to be relocated in that area. Um, and that's what this uh, contract would be for. Again, and that's, and that's just for the um, design and design engineering. Only. Yes, okay. I have spoken with um, H2O and they believe that they will be able to complete this work as part of their, um, their uh, I can't remember what their contract is their called. Their contract. The, for the line one. crew. The for the line, line, line crew. crew. Contract. Yes. Great. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So that's good news. So. Any discussion or questions for Ms. Watson? Okay. Moving on to item C, discussion of task order 28 with Atkins for State Route 20 widening Butterworth, Ro Butterworth Road to I-575 water system facilities, SU's e-verification and preliminary relocation design, 10% in the amount of $26,651. Ms. Watson. 
Um, so this is for the Highway 20 East project, or actually, I'm sorry, West project. Um, we've recently been notified that GDOT is moving forward with that project and has already released phase one for utility. The next phase will be phase two, which will be from Butterworth to I-575. And during that process, we'll have to have um, our utilities located and a preliminary design um, laid out. And basically, Atkins would be um, looking at all of our utilities in the area and deciding whether or not they need to be relocated based on spots um, alignment. Okay. okay. Any questions? Okay. And then item D, discussion of third amendment to professional services contract with utility service company. Thank you. Um, so this is a amendment to the utility services company contract, which is our water tank maintenance company. Um, basically, due to delays in tank renovations, they have come up with a cost amendment, um, which on which is for one great sky tank. Um, the original renovations were to occur in 2015. However, there's been a significant del delay in that work and costs have significantly increased due to inflation. And the reason why we have delayed renovations is because we had to have improvements to the Amos Road booster station, which are now completed. Um, we do need to run a test to make sure that we can bypass the tank to supply water to Little Canyon um, without the tank in service. We will not be able to run that test until November um, at the earliest due to irrigation. Um, so this, this um, contract would be to increase the cost due to the um, delay in services. And then for the Big Oak tank, there's also been a, a delay in the renovation. We currently um, have a bid out for the um, booster pump station at um, the industrial park, which will allow us to take that tank down and then those renovations can occur. Um, so I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. And I think this is an amendment to uh, a contract. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, the original contract was executed in 2013, is that correct? Yes, so this yeah. quite old a contract, so uh, it certainly helps to justify an amendment to kind of update that and bring us to where we are today on our water tank maintenance. So any questions for Ms. Watson? Okay. Item E, discussion of award of change order one for Highway 140 to Avery Road Waterline Relocation Project with Sam contracting the amount of $73,100. Ms. Watson, you're up again. <laughs> So just uh, to let everyone know who um, the new council members, this project was bid out in um, 2022 um, and was awarded to CAM Contracting. <coughs> there was a delay due to um, uh, the contract between GDOT and their contractor, which caused CAM to be pushed off for a year before they could do the work. Um, due to that, we did have um, a change order um, I'm sorry, due to that we had to, there was an increase in cost that went on to the original invoice and we also had to put in three eight inch wet taps, two eight inch insertion valves and two long side services for a change order amount of $73,100. Okay. This is just for discussion. I guess you'll be bringing that change order at the next meeting for Approval. Consideration approval. Any questions from Ms. Watson on this? Good afternoon. Okay, Mr. Waterman. Ms. Watson, the, so the, the change in cost is just attributed to the, the addition of the wet taps and not... No, I'm sorry. I, I, I explained that incorrectly. The reason why the wet taps and the insertion valves were done versus what was originally designed is to keep the people that were out there from being out of water. So the way that it was originally designed, you would have had to cut the water off in order to replace the lines. The insertion valves allow you to shut off water without turning off water to the, uh, to the uh, citizens. Thanks, thank you. 
-hmm. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And item F is the agenda item was added by the city manager. And that is discussion and possible action of engineering services agreement with Schnabel Engineering for the Hickory Log Creek Dam. Mr. Peppers. Good evening. Uh, as you may be aware, we co-own a reservoir with Cobb County Marietta Water Authority. And we have a, a dam that's associated with that particular piece of property. Schnabel Engineering has been the engineer of record on that particular project since it first started. And we have always had a contract with them for um, our monitoring of the dam. Uh, dam monitoring, if you will. Um, our contract with them is coming to an end, and so this is, this is a, a new agreement with them. It's a five-year agreement for them to do the monitoring. Basically, they do a couple of visual inspections every year, and then they do some. We are required to do that as part of our um, uh, project permit through the Georgia Department of Natural Resources Environment Protection Division. The total cost of this contract is $300,000 over a five-year period, but we only pay 25% of the project cost because we're only 25% owners of the dam. So our cost would be about $75,000 over that five-year period or roughly $15,000 a year. The reason I asked to put this on the agenda, when we deal with contracts on the reservoir, we normally let Cobb County Marietta Water Authority take the lead since they're the largest by, by uh, percentage. Their board has approved the contract. It's been signed off on by their board. Um, then we take a secondary position to look at the contract. The contract's been reviewed by staff. It's standard to what we've offered before. I would ask that council consider moving forward with the contract, one, because it's budgeted, two, it's within my spending power, but it is a contract that you have to approve, and three, because it does take time to schedule the, the on-site um, work by the engineers. We'd like to get it done as soon as possible so that they can get it on their calendar and get out for their annual inspection. I'm happy to answer any particular questions you might have on the contract. Thank you, Mr. Peppers. As you mentioned, this is renewal with their contract. Uh, was the previous term five years also? Yes. Okay. And do we know uh, what the new fees comparison to the last contract? Very similar. We, we um, so Canton and Cobb County Marietta Water Authority work on two different school years. And so every year when we work on the budget, we do estimates based upon where we, you know, for prior years. This falls within the line of our estimates. Normally we'll budget anywhere from a 3 to 5% increase on professional services on an annual basis. So this fit within that line. Thank you. Obviously when you have a, own a dam, you have to do dam maintenance. So it makes sense. <laughs> I couldn't pass it a fetus, so I'm sorry. So... <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Peppers? Ms. McGrew? In the staff, in the staff recommendation, uh, it recommends approval and not to exceed $300,000. If there's a motion, should that motion say that it should not exceed $75,000? Um, it can. I mean, uh, ultimately, this contract is set up to not to exceed $300,000, so that means our portion exceeds seventy five. Thank you. I just wrote what was in the act. No. I understand. Thank you. And I think the percentage um, that Canton pays is covered by the other agreements. So that's right. It's under our it's under our reservoir management plan and project agreement. Okay. Any other questions? I'd like to make a motion. Ms. Ms. McGrew. I motion that we approve the agreement for the engineering services of Sch uh, Schnabel Engineering for the five-year term with the project cost not to exceed $300,000. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. All members voted for the motion. And then Mr. Peppers, you're up with your report. Uh, yes, sir. Um, so I'm very excited to announce, and we'll have a press release going out tomorrow, that I have hired a new police chief. 
Uh, Chief Marty Farrell will start with us on March 27th. Uh, Chief Farrell uh, comes to us from the city of Marietta. He spent the he's he's spent his entire career with the city of Marietta in law enforcement, serving as an officer, sergeant, lieutenant, uh, captain, major, deputy chief, and and ending as the chief there. Um, he is very excited about joining our team. He has an extensive background in all all forms of the agency from internal affairs and investigations, patrols, special operations, administration, records, uh, big advocate of community outreach. Uh, we did our interviews last week um, with the finalists and he was he was just the, the, the top choice of everyone who was on the interview panel. So we're excited to have him. Um, like I said, he'll be joining us on March 27th. Um, most imp most importantly, um, he's looking forward to being part of a team uh, and, and working with our officers. Uh, he, he let us know very quickly the reputation that Canton Police has in the region, and he hopes to, to continue that. Um, I would like to thank uh, 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 our interim chief, John Lummis. I think he's done a fantastic job over the last couple of months, uh, and, and specifically our officers as a whole. It's very stressful when you go through getting a new, a new department head, especially for some who've never had a change in the chief. And our team's done an admirable job during this process. Um, very excited by the work that Mercer Group did for us in the national search. We had a lot of applicants, more applicants than they expected, and I think that's a testament to our community and our department. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to announce that to you. Like I said, we will have a press release going out tomorrow. We'll have some additional information in it. Um, I was able yesterday to notify the department and members of the department, uh, and, and as I had notified you as well. So, um, so we will make sure that when uh, Chief Farrell starts, we'll have a reception for him and some time for him to meet the public uh, and be available to you as well. Um, also, I wanted to thank you. I wanted, to, I wanted to mention our uh, team members of the month. Uh, we're a little bit delayed in January, but Maria Chang, who works with us up front um, in reception and administration, she was our team member of the month for uh, January. David Casey was our team member of the month for February. David transitioned from Public Works. He was one of our members for Team Clean Canton. He is now our custodian at, uh, at Elizabeth Street. Uh, and has quickly become a, a fan favorite over there uh, with the police department, municipal court, IT. Uh, they enjoy working with him. Every month it's always a joy to, to get to meet with the team member of the month and surprise them. Sometimes they're nervous coming to the city manager's office and, and uh, gotta, gotta, kinda gotta let them go through a little bit of pressure before you give them out the big frame and the award <coughs> and all that. But it's always, it's always interesting to see how how they react and every month I'm just impressed with how humble our staff is and how how proud they are of the fact that their teammates decided that they should be the employee of the month so uh, I did want to recognize those two individuals mayor and council will be having our retreat next weekend starting on Friday it'll be Friday Saturday and Sunday we're gonna be at the the new um, Cloudland Resort at Michaelmore which is uh, just in Walker County uh, one of the reasons why we picked that particular location is as the city's working with our consultant on hotel and resorts um, for our side at the Bluffs and also from downtown, we thought it would be a good idea to see one that's just come out of the functioning and the story behind it and what it, its impacts will be in that particular community. Uh, so that'll be a good place for us to go. Uh, right now, it appears that we'll have uh, some staff there on Friday, and that'll be when we review projects and we go over some of the existing programs and, and questions that they have for you on some of the direction of those projects. Saturday will be a time where we'll go through the roadmap and we'll have conversations about some bigger issues uh, as a council, more policy-related things, and then we'll wrap up Sunday morning. Uh, we hope to have the agenda out for that tomorrow. Uh, so that so that it will be out to the public and also also out to everybody on the council at that time. I'm happy <coughs> to answer any questions you might have from me. Any questions for Mr. Peppers? Thank you, Mr. Peppers. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Chang, Mr. Casey, for their Employees of the Month awards. And again, on behalf of 
Mayor and Council, we want to thank our appreciation, uh, pass along our appreciation to, to Interim Chief Lummis on the job well done. Uh, great news on Chief Farrell and uh, certainly a stellar background. And uh, I, I know I've talked to several council members and I personally have done some checking in his background and nothing but positive and blowing, glowing reviews from um, everyone he's worked with. So we look forward to continuing the excellent work that our police department is doing and knowing that the leadership uh, will continue to be, be strong. So, um, and uh, one of the advance, uh, week in advance, thank council for, for sacrificing their weekend next week uh, and uh, look forward to the great work and discussions we'll be having uh, to keep moving our city forward uh, uh, to the benefit of our, of our residents and businesses. So. Uh, look forward to the retreat and, and all we have to talk about and consider and, and uh, uh, the work ahead. So thank you, Mr. Peppers. Thank you. For my report, um, again, I have some appointments I want to make, uh, and I know that we have some council members that have some appointments to make uh, tonight. So, um, again, this is on our ongoing efforts to uh, completely build out our our boards and commissions um, and keep those functioning and doing all the great work that they're doing. Uh, so I will make my appointments. I'll ask for council appointments uh, and then we'll, we'll consider that uh, slate of appointments as uh, a holistic slate and ask for a motion to uh, uh, second and approve those uh, for council. So I have three appointments to make. Um, and the first one is for the Board of Appeals, and I'd like to appoint uh, Jeff Adams uh, to replace Luke Smith, who is, uh, needs to step down from that, uh, from that board. Uh, many of you know, know Jeff. He's his developer. He would be great for that board. I think Mr. Roach knows him personally. So. <laughs> but uh, uh, he uh, is excited to uh, take on this role and, and be a service to the city. Um, Second appointment I would like to make is to the Downtown Development Authority, Mr. Penn Hodge, who has been serving uh, on that authority, uh, has done an excellent job, uh, has asked to step down. Um, he, we, we all know he has lots of projects going on in the city and, and uh, is quite busy. And uh, I'd like to appoint Mr. Royal Royal of to that uh, to that position. Uh, He's a citizen of Canton. Uh, he and his wife, Cynthia, own La Luna Bakery on Marietta Road. And uh, Mr. C. Fuentes uh, works for at and um, Very uh, knowledgeable, experienced uh, young man and uh, is, is currently working on software products for first responders um, uh, through the FirstNet Authority, um, but is very enthusiastic to, to join the DDA board. Uh, uh, and it's great to have some representation for, um, from someone uh, in the expanded downtown development authority district. Uh, and then my third appointment is to the Historic Preservation Commission. And I'd like to, report, uh, like to appoint Nathan Rich, who is a resident on Cherokee Street, um, and to replace uh, Jeff Brown, who has uh, stepped down from that uh, commission. Uh, Mr. Rich is a, uh, in a construction business has a passion for historic preservation. Um, some of you may know the, the home that, that he bought and is working on is Miss Sarah Latham's house, which is a, actually a historic uh, home in, in that uh, Ward 2. Uh, so those are three appointments uh, that I would like to make. And uh, at this time, I know we have council members that would like to make appointments. Uh, I know, Mr. Waterman, you have some appointments to make. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just have one. Uh, I would like to appoint uh, Ms. Tracy Busby to the Ethics Board. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Waterman. Ms. McGrew, I believe you have some appointments. I do, thank you. I would like to appoint Ms. Deb Payne to the Environmental and Sustainability Advisory Board to the Ethics Committee. I would like to appoint Mr. Lee Stafford and Ms. Bethany Stafford. Okay. Okay. 
any other appointments this evening? Oh, yes. I'm sorry about that. Yes, I need to make uh, new appointments to the CID board, which is the, uh, the, the um, Community Improvement District. <laughs> Get these, 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 uh, these abbreviations, uh, a lot to deal with. But uh, this is the Community Improvement District. Is after this, uh, the board uh, considers the, we have community, community Improvement District at Canton Place, Marketplace, um, and the city has, the mayor has two appointments to that. Uh, they're not voting members, but they are there to basically to, to, to understand what's going on with that uh, district and report back to, to mayor and council appropriately. So uh, for that, I'd like to officially appoint Councilman Brian Roach to that and then reappoint, uh, uh, it can be an elected official or a citizen, uh, and reappoint uh, Brooke Schmidt uh, to that, uh, that board who's currently has been serving on that board as well. So. I'll add those two to the list. Any, any others? What, what was Rich's last name? I'm sorry, I was making. Um, uh, Nathan Rich. Nathan Rich. All right. So I just want to make sure I have all of these correct. I have Jeff Adams replacing Luke Smith on the Board of Appeals, and that's the mayor's appointment. Raul Fentes. Uh, replacing Ken Hodge on the DDA, that's also the mayor's appointment. Nathan Rich, uh, replacing Jeff Brown on the Historic Preservation Commission, that's the mayor's appointment. Tracy Busby for the Ethics Commission, and that's Mr. Waterman's appointment. Deb Payne to the Environmental and Sustainability Advisory Board, and that's Ms. McGrew's appointment. Lee Stafford to the Ethics Board by Ms. McGrew. Bethany Stafford to the Ethics Board by Ms. McGrew. Brian Roach to the Community Improvement District Board by the Mayor, and Brooke Schmidt to the Community Improvement District Board by the Mayor. Is that all of the list? That's everything I have on my list. Okay. okay. So we checked and double checked. So uh, <laughs> we have those appointments. Um, uh, do we have uh, both my appointments and the council members' appointments? Uh, do we have a second to that slate of appointments? Okay, and uh, again, um, all in favor of those appointments, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All members voted for the appointment. So again, we want to thank these, these citizens and elected officials for, for their service to the city and enthusiastic service um, in these positions and always thank our boards and commissions for the work they do to help us advance the roadmap for success for all citizens. So. Uh, we had, and I just realized I gave my report before I, and I passed over Mr. Tolan, who has a, a council introduced item, so we will um, consider that, uh, uh, and that is an update on the Dick Gick uh, Housing Committee. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Tolan, I didn't no mean to do that. I was so excited about my appointment. No. So I just <laughs> Glad you got that done. Um, thank you. I Ms. McGrew gave me a call last week, and she wanted to know what was going on with housing. And it got me thinking, you know, we're approaching our halfway mark through our Georgia for Initiative, Georgia Initiative for Community Housing journey. Uh, it's a three-year program, and we're coming up on a year and a half, so I figured this would be a good time to kind of give council and the public an update on, on what we've been doing over the last couple of years, actually the last four years for me. Um, so... I will try to be as brief as possible, but I'm going to touch on everything. Mr. Patton is here to, to keep me honest. I did kind of confer with him, so I think that this is pretty comprehensive. Um, so I'm just going to start the down payment assistance program that was approved recently, and that will afford uh, people that are buying their first home up to $12,000 in forgivable loans uh, for a down payment. Those can be stacked with other programs. There's other programs uh, from the state that could be coupled with the, um, with the Canton Down Payment Assistance Program. So that's, that's pretty exciting. We're, of course, hoping that interest rates will come down soon so that some of those folks can come out of the woodwork and, uh, and take advantage of that. Uh, the next item is our ADU plans. They were approved by the city in uh, 2023, 
There are four plans, which I hope people will take advantage of, and I'll go through that here in just a second. But uh, there are, are four plans. A studio is uh, 304 square feet. There's a one bedroom that's 506 square feet, a two bedroom that's 702. And there's also <coughs> a unit with a garage and a house above um, <coughs> at 807 square feet. Permit fees for ADUs is a whopping $300. So we do, have, uh, we do have one unit that is under construction right now, so that's very exciting, and hope that other people will take advantage of the ADU opportunity. <coughs> the, the, the thing that comes to mind always is, you know, who, who, would, it, who would benefit from an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit, and that's uh, anybody that may be on a fixed income that could use the money. Maybe they want to move into the ADU and rent their home out, uh, rent the ADU or allow a family member to live there at no charge. So there's lots of opportunities that the ADU uh, could present to residents of the city. One of the limiting factors of an ADU is currently you cannot get a standard loan. Um, you need to go through HELOC, uh, a home equity line of credit, or use cash. But I understand there are some rumblings in the investment and banking community that may tweak that just a little bit. So stand by for more on that. The next is the uh, North Canton Cottage Village. We're working on that. The um, survey and ge geotechnical work has been completed now. Fire safety concerns were resolved recently um, by moving from a two-way street to a one-way street. This is brand new information. And as of uh, yesterday, Mr. Patton received a, um, a rendering from Branch Concepts that employs that one-way street, so that's exciting and um, he is going to be presenting the details of that, I believe, at our next meeting. Is that correct, Mr. Patton? Okay. Um, the next thing is the uh, cottage home development uh, regu regulations, excuse me, um, and you can see all that. I won't go through all that, but there's, those regulations have been uh, adopted. The uh, cottage plans, of course, are available to people that want to build a home at no charge, so that's kind of unique to the city of Canton. The next thing is the, uh, I wanted to go over the, the Canton uh, tax credit projects. Of course, Tanner Place was approved, new construction of 70 units, which will replace both the Ship Street and the Jefferson Circle units. That's exciting, and that's coming up very soon for uh, a groundbreaking. Tanner Place, the uh, timeline financial package is closing in April, next month. Uh, construction will start in May. The lease up will start in February of 2025, and they anticipate, and these are all, of course, moving targets based on factors like weather. Um, construction will be completed in the October-ish time frame of 2025, and they hope to have those um, stabilized by January of 2026. The, the next one is the Oakside behind the old, um, old R.T. Jones Hospital, also approved by DCA. Uh, the, uh, the Housing Authority is working on a plan to develop the site with new units and potentially add additional stock, which would be great. Lots of need out there. Um, and you see the, the timeline, the closing should, should happen around the fourth quarter. Construction again in the fourth quarter, lease up around six months after that. Construction within about 18 months after the construction start and then stabilization three months later. Uh, moving on to the Tippin site, um, I believe we've all heard a lot about the Tippin site. That's an old, uh, old school kind of in what we refer to as the old mill village number two. Uh, demolition is, is slated to start in April of this year and should end in June. Um, we then, I believe, are going to con convene some community stakeholders to have some discussions about what will happen with that site. So lots of excitement around that. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we are working on a Cherokee Regional Land Bank Authority. So the purpose of that is provide affordable, excuse me, attainable housing largely through repurposing underutilized properties. So more, more on that later, uh, but uh, uh, Cherokee County and six cities are participating. It, the requirement of a, a punity land bank is that the county must participate. <coughs> they have decided they do want to participate, that, that, but they want to have an arm, arm's length um, relationship with the six cities as the six cities will kind of manage um, that endeavor. Um, each local government will have an appointment. Cherokee Office of Economic Development will have an appointment. There'll be an at-large appointment as well. So that's, that's pretty exciting. The Canton Land Trust is something that Mr. Pat, is, excuse me, Mr. Patton is exploring. 
and it's a viable, uh, exploring the viability of the use of the land trust uh, as an option to improve opportunities for building a home in Canton. A land trust can typically reduce the cost of a home by as much as 25%. So the idea is, is that uh, an individual or a municipality could own the land and lease that land to a potential person that might build a home, typically a 99-year lease, and uh, so then that, that homeowner would then only be responsible for the 75% of the cost of the home. So another creative way I think that uh, we might utilize here in Canton to, um, to help curb some of the, the rising cost of home ownership. Um, and then I wanted to touch on the, the GIC housing team. We're made up of uh, several stakeholders from the city as well as uh, folks from real estate, the Canton, Canton Housing Authority, the banking community, developments, nonprofits, and we're approaching the midpoint of our three-year um, journey, as I mentioned before. Area of the cities, areas of the cities that we've identified, Newtown, the Mill Village number two, which is the first target area that we're going to be working on. Uh, Stumptown's another one, Mill Village number two, which is Roosterville and Windy Hill, and then the Sunnyside area. Um, we have uh, developed or assigned subcommittees that will be tasked with, with uh, three different things. The resource team, I'm heading that, and that's essentially, you know, where are we going to get the money, where are we going to get the people to do the work. Education and engagement, that's Mr. Leonard Akers, and that's how are we going to communicate what we're going to do to the community. And then uh, neighborhood revitalization is headed by Mr. Patton, so essentially organizing the work that is going to be done. Um, just real quickly, the, the idea is that we, in areas that are in need, we want to um, encourage those residents that are homeowner home occupied that uh, if they need financial help, we want to try to help them as much as we can. And, and I, I do believe we have a very caring community that, that would, uh, would pony up as it relates to uh, funding most of this. Um, there's, a, there's a software program that's going to help us assess where we are. It's, it's from a company called Fulcrum, and essentially it will speed up the, um, what we call windshield survey to kind of determine where gutters might need some help, painting, windows, things like that. So that, uh, um, I believe Mr. Peppers is working with Mr. Patton to possibly do something in the spring or the summer. Um, the first target area, as I mentioned, is at Old, Old Mill Village number two. 207 owner-occupied homes in that particular area, and we're working through various groups, including Cherokee Collective, uh, to identify folks that might be um, willing to help with some of that work, because there's, there's going to be a lot of work to be done. Um, wrapping up here, I promise, <laughs> and we're going to be, uh, of course, securing volunteers. We've identified some folks like uh, scout, group, scout troops. Nonprofits, um, high schoolers, and community volunteers. Lots of really good people, as I said, in Canton that want to roll up their sleeves and help with that endeavor. Um, so we, we plan on going out to the businesses, um, especially the larger businesses, for some funding and hoping that we can get some minimal seed funding from the city to kind of help jumpstart some of that. I, th I think what we're going to realize is once we get the ball rolling, that people are going to come out of the woodwork and uh, offer, to, offer to help. Um, and then um, we, we, one of the important things, especially when you go into a community that may not be as trusting as, as other communities, is getting the word out. And so we're in the process of identifying some of the local leaders in these communities that might uh, help us get the word out in a, in a non-threatening sort of way. Well, all we want to do is help. We don't want to um, you know, hold a flashlight on anybody. Um, so some progress that's been done in this particular area is one eight. I mentioned the one ADU is under construction. Two new plex, two, two new duplex rental units. Uh, that's a mouthful. Three detached residential units, and then one property has been identified for a cottage cottage housing development. And the last thing is we've got our uh, spring retreat coming up in Tipton. Uh, next month, very excited about that, and I believe we have uh, Mr. Patton, 12 members that are going to join us down there, so excited to present our sophomore report on where we've, uh, where we've come. So that's it. Great. Thank you, Mr. Tolan. I appreciate that comprehensive report and update. Uh, thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you, Mr. Patton, for your leadership and your continued uh, knowledge contributions 
to our housing initiatives uh, and thanks to all the members of our housing and kick team for all the obviously all the work that you're doing and we're starting to see some real results to that so appreciate your efforts and appreciate the updates and look forward to, to future updates and I believe that completes our agenda tonight is there anything else anyone to add? if not I will entertain a motion to adjourn Motion to adjourn. Second. Don't you guys rush in? I know you want to <laughs> keep having quality time together. But anyway, I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. <laughs>